to Europe. And uh, we have here a joint presentation shared between Antje Kepner and uh, Gabriel Martins. Antje Kepner is the director of the Eurobioimaging Biohub by the European Molecular Biology Laboratory in Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, her academic background is in biochemistry and chemical biology with wide applications in imaging. She studied biochemistry at the Ruhr University uh, in Bochum and then moved to the EPFL in Lausanne for her PhD in chemical biology where she developed the, the so-called snap tag technology, which is now widely used in imaging technologies. After her academic career in 2009, she moved to science management at the University Hospital in Heidelberg, and she has been working in this field since uh, 2009 at EMBL. She has been involved in building your bioimaging Gaelic since its very early days, and was key in bringing the European scientific community together. Antje uh, also works together with the Global Bioimaging Partners to commonly promote open science and open access to imaging research infrastructure services. I introduce straight away also Gabi, uh, who is the head of the Advanced Imaging Facility at Instituto Gulbenkian de Ciencia in Portugal. I hope I pronounced that more or less okay. Um, he has a PhD in anatomy and cell biology from the School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences in Sunny Buffalo, USA and more than 20 years of imaging experience. Gabi is a founding member of the Portuguese Platform for Bioimaging, which is a Eurobioimaging node, and represents Portugal in the Eurobioimaging Panel of Nodes, which is part of the ERIC governance. He is also a founding member of the network of European bioimage analysts called Nubias, and is particularly involved in training activities. I will now share my screen for uh, anti-slides and then pass the word to Gabi. Yeah, thanks a lot, Federica, and also thanks a lot, Chris, um, for inviting Eurobiomaging here today. Gabi and myself to have the opportunity to present um, today at this meeting of the Latin American Bioimaging Network. And I think a lot of what was just presented already uh, by the previous two speakers, you will see echoed by what actually happened in Eurobiomaging. Federica, can you already move to the next slide? Thanks a lot. So together with Gabi, I would like to present to you in the next minutes some key information on Eurobioimaging, which is a research infrastructure. So that is something different than a network of facilities. An infrastructure is really something that is funded by a group, of, in this case, countries together for people to go there to access the actual imaging technologies that are offered by this research infrastructure. And we would also like to tell you how they support the life scientists by offering cutting edge imaging services and expertise. So Eurobiomaging came into being as a large pen European um, research infrastructure um, two years ago, but the way to come there was very long and it started almost a decade ago. And it was from the beginning a community supported bottom up initiative all along the way. This is really what you need when you want to build something sustainable for a scientific community. Currently, uh, Eurobiomaging ERIC is governed and funded by its 17 ERIC members. These are 16 European countries and EMBL as an international organization. Eurobiomaging, um, since this Tuesday, comprises now 33 nodes hosted by our member countries that represent together 137 individual imaging facilities and technology platforms that are distributed all across Europe. These nodes are established and operating imaging platforms, and they have been recognized for their excellence and their unique service provision, and they are ready to welcome every scientist that is applying for access through Eurobioimaging. Currently, they offer access and services to more than 45 different imaging technologies. Next slide. Our technology and service offer, as you can see here, truly spans the full range of resolution, going from biological imaging all the way to biomedical imaging, meaning from single molecule to cell and tissue imaging to small animal imaging, and all the way up to population-based imaging. This makes Eurobioimaging particularly interesting for researchers that are seeking multimodal imaging approaches or translational research fields are working in translational research fields such as cancer or infectious diseases. Next slide. Is there a question or? Okay, <laughs> seems not to be the case. Um, 
I have brought for you here the benefits um, for researchers that can apply for access to neurobiomaging as well as benefits for the participating imaging facilities in neurobiomaging. So for the researchers, when they are using neurobiomaging services, they get high quality image data because our nodes are quality managed. And as I said, they were selected really for their excellence. The researchers can also explore a new area of research that might not easily be doable at their home institution. They can build new collaborations. They can also look into multidisciplinary research fields and learn from the senior experts working at the nodes. For our nodes, the benefits are that they can encounter new knowledge because new external users are coming to their place, new challenges, and also push the imaging systems to new frontiers. Together with the other nodes, they can build strong networks. And we do see this a lot uh, happening in neurobioimaging after its start. And Gabi will probably tell you a little bit more about this. Um, they can increase their international visibility. And they can also increase the visibility with their national funders and build new industry collaborations. And that brings me already to my last slide for this presentation for my part. So I would like um, to share with you our experiences from the early days when we started to develop neurobioimaging. It took about 12 years um, between concept publication for neurobioimaging when it entered the S3 roadmap, which is a strategic roadmap for research infrastructures in Europe, and its official launch in late 2019. As I said, this is really a true bottom-up initiative by the imaging communities in our different member countries. So in the early days, around 2009, 2010, 11, we traveled around Europe. And first thing we did was to engage um, with a group of imaging enthusiasts that were living and working in a given country, because they were really our first entry point. And then in the second step, this group of people invited everyone they knew about in that imaging community in that country to a first come together to a first meeting. This is usually when, um, for example, myself, when I attended to present the concept of community building and neurobiomaging. Usually what happened during this first meeting was that the people in the room identified their existing resources, they named their facilities, they um, sometimes also produced lists of uh, common instrumentation, what is around, what kind of training courses are up and running. But they also identified common needs, challenges, and interests, including also the possibility to provide together open access to their facilities and exchange of knowledge and people. Based on this first meeting, what in every case happened was that they were really enthusiastically carrying this forward and launching a national imaging community. This in most cases refl was reflected in the um, mandate of a national committee, or in some cases they mandated a spokesperson or a coordinator that was then in charge to take forward the common activities and to speak on their behalf, for example, to Europe Imaging. They often identified common activities, low hanging fruits, where they advertised together training courses, started in small case, smaller um, cases, the staff exchange program, or they had together um, the organization of conferences. When they had the resources available, or if there were volunteers around, they started um, to build their common website so that users and researchers could really find easily the different facilities of that given country. They started writing common funding proposals. And most importantly, they started talking with one voice. They started talking with one voice towards us, towards Eurobioimaging, but they also started talking to their national funders to convince them that it's really a good idea to work together and to have a national strategy in place for imaging. And in all of these cases, it led to the increase of visibility for how important imaging is for the life sciences and to put this topic on the national funding strategy. And this was really the reason and why there's Eurobiomaging today, that all of these people in the different countries came together, organized themselves, and spoke with one voice to their funders. And I would really like to thank all of the communities here. And um, today we have Gabi here from us, as Federica just said, from Portugal, who might tell you a little bit about one of these countries where this happened in Portugal. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me to give you a little very brief introduction to what PPBI is and how we came to be. As um, Angie just said, um, 
this this was um, the eurobioimaging was a spark that kind of created or uh, set in motion the, um, the the need the interest for labs in Portugal to get together and build a community in Portugal. It started around 2011, 12, if I believe. Paula was actually the person who probably Antia contacted first. And then Paula, um, who was running and is still running uh, one of the major labs in imaging in Portugal, in, in Porto, um, started, contacted me, contacted Coimbra, uh, uh, Luisa in Coimbra. And then we started contacting other people and we all got together. And it was interesting that at the time, um, many of the labs were just actually starting. So Portugal, as you probably know, is a small country, not unlike a small country with um, continuous problems of funding in terms of science. So not unlike many of the, the, the countries in Latin America. Um, uh, Portugal is a very, very small country, unlike our, our, our brother country in Brazil, which is like 20 times bigger in terms of population. We're a small country, with very small budgets. Um, so it was interesting for us because there was lots of limitations in these labs to get to know other people, other expertises and complementary equipment. I am running the, the, the imaging facility at the Gulbenkian Institute, which is a very old imaging facility. And we've always tried to, be, to have all the techniques as much as possible. We were the first lab to have super resolution, mesoscopy in Portugal. And I, when I joined the IGC in 2013, um, I had this, this worry in, in me that I would have to have expertise in all areas of imaging from super resolution all the way up to mesoscopy. And, and that's not easy to do. Um, getting to know other people in the country with uh, expertise better than mine in many of these techniques was actually quite good. So aerobioimaging was, as I said, this, the starting point, the spark, the reason for us to get together and get to know each other. These days we cooperate a lot. We started back in 2012 to actually come together as a community. There is a website. We applied for infrastructural funding which took almost four years to, to realize. So between 2013, when we applied in 2017, when we finally got 5.6, close to 6 million US dollars in funding, um, we, it, it took quite a while. And in the meantime, we had to not just develop activities to show that we really were a community and that we, we, we had all the justifications to get this funding but also that we were a community of uh, more than a thousand users with 15 labs, many of whom had either no appropriate equipment or outdated equipment. Our strategy from the very beginning, because this made sense to us, was that everybody in Portugal should go together as a very large community. That's not the reality across all the neurobioimaging um, nodes, uh, as you, some of you may be aware, uh, in some places, some countries have decided to go with more localized, high expertise nodes in Portugal. Uh, we are a large node composed of many, many multiple sites. And the, the, the fact that there's lots of us with a very broad range of expertise is actually an interesting point for people who want to do research in Portugal. The funding we got was just barely enough to hire new people, which was extremely important, as you may have guessed, and to update equipment which means that we did not actually have money for community building, for doing things that we should be doing as a community in Portugal. For example, organizing courses, uh, traveling. So what we ended up doing actually is to involve in a non-financial way, the community with other activities that we were developing, like uh, international courses that we were developing, um, uh, participation in international networks like the No Bias, for example, and we, we, we spread out information and tried to get as much of the people in Portugal involved in these activities as we could, so they could benefit from those side benefits from participating in those things. So we ended up actually doing a lot of EMBO courses where some of the people in Portugal were trained, uh, new bias activities, uh, image analysis training schools. And, and now we're very much looking forward to see what the future brings us. We, we just joined Eurobioimaging uh, very recently. We're one of the newest, if not the newest country to join and have a node in Eurobioimaging. Um, so right now, Portugal is officially open internationally to have uh, transnational access. And we are looking forward to a second round of funding. One of the things where I think Eurobioimaging and now being officially part of a very large network is the, the leverage that it brings you when you're negotiating with the government. It's not easy to get governmental funding here. It's still a big, big challenge. 
I mean, I just learned this week that the next round of infrastructural funding, which was supposed to start this month, is, is delayed by a few months. We're not, we don't know yet, which means that there's going to be a, a decalage where we're not exactly sure how we're going to keep everybody in the, in the community. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the fact that we're now officially a member of the Bioimaging has a huge weight every time we knock on the doors of, um, of, the, political, of the people who are uh, responsible for the political decisions. And, and I think that's pretty much only what I had to contribute to this meeting and I'm looking forward to the roundtable discussion. And congratulations on organizing your own com uh, communities. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Thanks for sharing your insights. I think... Uh...